We're now nearly six months removed from the catastrophic earthquake and tsunami in Japan that triggered, triggered a global nuclear catastrophe. And while some progress has been made to deal with this never before seen nuclear crisis, there's still a long way to go. A lot of questions still unanswered, and enormous risk still blanketing the nation of Japan and perhaps the world. So much so that world renowned physician and anti nuclear advocate Dr. Helen Caldicott recently issued a dire warning to the Japanese people. Not buying into the Japanese government's efforts to downplay the crisis, Dr. Caldicott warned people living in North Japan and around the crippled Fukushima reactors to get the hell out of the area. Dr. Caldicott said, the number of people evacuated is nothing compared to the total number of people at risk at, in Fukushima, which has a population of around 2 million or so in the prefecture. People left there are at grave risk of developing cancer and leukemia. They will continue to be further contaminated because the material has landed on the soil, so concentrated in the food, and will continue to be taken in through the air as large amounts of radiation continues to leak out through the three damaged reactors and the four damaged fuel cores. Dr. Caldicott joins me now from Australia to talk more about the, this issue. Dr. Caldicott, it's wonderful to see you. Thank you for, so much for joining us. Thank you, Tom. Um, you were recently quoted, I just read the quote basically, as saying that everybody in northwest Japan should be evacuated. Is that so? And if so, why? Where should they go? And how long do they need to stay away? I didn't actually say in the article everybody should be evacuated, but there are some very, very hot areas. An American plane three months after the accident went up with measuring facilities and measured three to 14.5 terabecquerels, three to 14.7 million becquerels in certain areas in Fukushima when the evacuation zone in Chernobyl was 550,000 Becquerels. So by orders of magnitude, people are living in incredibly dangerous areas. The Japanese government is not routinely measuring food, is not routinely measuring the radiation in, in areas throughout Japan. It is being thoroughly irresponsible. And may I say that North America has received quite a large fallout itself. There's just a report from Oklahoma that there's radiation there. And when you inhale a tiny amount of, say, plutonium into your lung, like a millionth of a gram from Fukushima landing in Oklahoma, you will not know it's in your lung, but 15 or 20 years later or a little longer, you may or almost certainly will develop lung cancer. But you won't know it's being caused by the plutonium from Fukushima you inhaled 20 years ago because there's a long incubation time for cancer. In other words, we're going to see an incredible increase in cancer, leukemia, and down the time track, genetic disease, not just in Japan, but in the Northern Hemisphere, particularly North America. What about people in the rest of, of Japan? For example, Tokyo, the most densely populated area. And, and, and also, uh, how does this affect the fact that their, their, their diet is principally sea-based and so much of this pollution has, uh, this uh, radioactive material has been uh, exploded out or washed out into the sea? Well, may you ask, Tom, they've poured out huge amounts of radiation into the Pacific Ocean. China has found cesium 300 times above normal radioactive cesium in their water just off the Chinese coast. The fish imbibe eat radioactive material and it concentrates first the algae concentrated then the crustaceans eat the algae concentrated further then the little fish then the big fish and big fish swim thousands of miles over to uh, the pacific northwest for instance tuna fish travel thousands of miles in the continents um, the epa is not routinely measuring the fish that are caught uh, they have no plans to do so um, the Japanese people are at great risk. They love their seafood. Almost everything is fish or rice. Their rice, 50% uh, of their rice crop is grown in the Fukushima prov province or near, near the reactor. So, and that's just about to come to harvest now. God knows what they will do. Um, and they have found very hot spots in Tokyo. They have found radioactive tea even south of Tokyo. So the accident is not over. There could be another earthquake. 
There have been three actual melt-throughs, which is unheard of in the history of the nuclear age, melt through the container onto the, onto the, uh, onto the floor. There could be massive hydrogen explosions still or steam explosions. And building four is very unstable and it's got a very hot cooling pool on top of it. And that, if there's another earthquake, that pool could collapse, the building could collapse, and God knows how much radiation could escape. No one knows how to end this accident. It's ongoing, and uh, the scientists are very confused. It's, some say it might take three years to fix, some say uh, decades. But what, we're in the middle what, of a medical catastrophe. What can people in, for example, Tokyo, in, you know, in the near proximity in the country, and people in the rest of the Northern Hemisphere, what can or should they and we be doing? Well, we need the data, Tom, and that's not forthcoming. The Japanese government should be measuring all the food supplies and if they're radioactive, banning them. But in fact, they're elevating the levels of radiation to which people, particularly children, can be exposed. No radiation is safe. Every dose you receive adds to your risk of getting cancer, particularly if you're eating radioactive food, which and the, the isotopes lodge in various organs, your liver your lung, your brain are radiating just a few cells for many years, giving those cells a high dose, and, and almost inevitably many will induce, will, will develop cancer. The other thing is they should be measuring the radiation in the soil thoroughly, systematically throughout Japan and evacuating people from areas that are radioactive. They should be measuring the air because the children are inhaling the air. Uh, almost 50% of children uh, had this, uh, of a thousand children, almost 50% have radioactive iodine in their thyroid glands in a certain part of the Fukushima province. So those children are at great risk of developing thyroid cancer. Uh, we, we have data from Chernobyl to show now from the New York Academy of Sciences report that over a million people have died as a result of Chernobyl. Over a million. Well, now, some people say that the accident at Fukushima is three to five times worse than Chernobyl. That's, that's And that's that radiation terrible. has spread around the Northern Hemisphere. I can't tell you as a physician, yeah. once you eat radioactive food, we can't get it out of your bodies. I, we I, can't. I understand. Dr. Caldicott, I'm we sorry we're out, of, we're out of time, but I, you, you made your point yeah. very well and very eloquently, and I very much appreciate your joining us tonight from Australia. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Let's not let this terrible lesson in Japan go to waste. Let's ditch nuclear power in the United States for good.